I tie these mini sockers in two different colors, these ones. This is the dirty yellow, and this is the natural mini soaker. Both colors represent different species of bait fish. The dirty yellow one I made to look like a carnal minnow or the foxinus foxinus as they call it in Latin. The other one, the gray, is uh, a more transparent fly, can look like a pin fry, perch fry, even stickleback, some white fish. And this yellow one is also a good stickleback color. And it's not all about the imitation. These, these flies catch trout that never eat another fish. Great attractor, and that is my main usage. Let's talk a little bit about materials. The hook I use is this one, a Chemco 112TR size 7. And this hook has a shank of 11mm and a quite generous gap of 7. It hooks fish well, you can dub barb it if you like. I do it a lot and it works really well. For the tread, I use like a standard Beneki 12O or Uni 8O, color to match the body. The weight I add to this hook is, is well proven, and um, I have a 2.3mm slotted tungsten bead in the, in the front here, and 0 020 lead wire underneath. You can also use a brass bead on 2.4mm uh, or, or so. The body, I make the body of ice dub. For the dirty yellow one, I have this light yellow UV in the rear and in the front. I have this one, golden brown. And the natural grey one, I use the minnow belly. It's a nice color. The advantage of ice dub is uh, the length of the fibers and you can spin it and you can tie it in separate on the hook and you can fold it and trim it. So you need a little bit length of the dub. The squirrel sunkers I use, I cut myself about 3mm wide. And then I taper them down all the way out and in the end here it's probably around 1.5 mil or so gradually taper down. I even stretch them a little bit. You can buy packages of, of uh, squirrel sunkers and like these and they are normally like 2 mm. Works, works just fine. You taper them in the back. Now depending on what kind of sunker you have, there, there is a couple of things to think through and let me give you one example here. When, when I tie this fly in this video, I spin the sunker here to make a, a hackle or, or collar to build up a little bit of volume here against the head and make an even yeah, nice teardrop shape. When you have quite sparse sunkers like this, these are quite common. It might be better to just tie in uh, a bunch of hair on the sides and to get the proper volume and you can you can cut off bunches of fibers like this and tie in on both sides and even on the top to accomplish the same as I do when I spin it. And on this dirty yellow here I actually spin first in the front and then I tie in a piece of black rabbit soaker here on the top to make the yeah the good attitude, the cool looks of the fly. Right, let's start to tie the fly. I have the tungsten bead on. I'm using a white thread for this one. I'm going to make the, the grey variant. Start to cover the hook shank with a bit of thread, building up a little bit where the bead is. So it kind of stops to, to roll around the, the hook like that. The way I tie this fly gives really good balance in the water. You can see the fly going straight it, it, like this. It, it doesn't die with the head first. So. To accomplish this I add some lead wire as well on the underside of the hook. I have a slotted bead and I'm actually inserting this 0 0.20 uh, lead wire into the slot in the bead. And then just fasten it there. Try to center the lead wire on the underside of the hook. And I tie down the lead about half of the length, like so, and just tear it off. Then a few wraps. And then I finish up with a whip finish. Because I like to make these ready weighted hooks in advance. And I also glue them, so I like the glue to, 
to dry first. So on either side of the hook I put on some super glue so that the lead wire and the wrappings and the bead kind of merge all together in one solid package. Like so. And then we swap to a hook that is ready and is dry to continue. So, now we start on the real tying. I tie backwards to, uh, to where the thread hang almost parallel to the, to the hook barb. We started building up a little bit of a tail and the salmon fishermen kind of gave me the idea to do this with their usage of the fluorofiber. And they, they like to make a tapered kind of tail to support the wings and give a hot spot. I like to do it because I want to lengthen the body of the fly. So I tie it in on top of the hook like this. And I normally have like a short stubby end here and here a long rough one so when I fold it over it's more naturally tapered. And this is the reason why I need a little bit of length on the dubbing. And now you can trim this a little bit. You don't want it to be really massive just like a Nice tapered that will cover the sunker skin as well and give the fly a little bit more volume, a little bit more length, like so. We'll trim the fly several times later. Now the sunker strip I use, I cut them myself and they are about 3mm wide. And then I trim it down towards the point down to two millimeter or so. When I'm going to fasten this, I want to have the length of the sunken strip outside like this length. The hook shank minus the bead. So I stroke up from fibers like this and then I measure the skin to the tail and see where I hit the bead. Yeah, that's almost like it. Now you want to make sure that you don't tie down any here so necessary. When you have this in place, put it on top, make a nice soft turn around before I tighten a couple of times. Check so that the strip is straight on the hook. Maybe twist turn the vise upside down to check like that. It's alright. Only two three wraps is enough to do this. Then I stroke this one backwards. If you have long strips, you can always clamp something on and hold it to the vise. Now to cover up the wrappings from the tying thread and the tying point of the sunker and make a little bit more volume, I pick an another piece of uh, eye stubbing. The color I'm using by the way in this grey one is called Minnow Belly. It's, it's a very good color. Um, I place this on my, my side, take a couple of turns and then I take this part over to the other side and force both down so they merge together with the tail and make a little bit more body. The rest of the body I tie in by using a dubbing loop, a dubbing twister and it's, it's not a lot of dubbing that you really need to make this fly, it's, it's better to brush them up a little bit nicely to get the shape that you want. You want them to be a little bit fatter towards the head than in the rear. So take out a piece like this, put it into the dubbing loop, start to spin, watch that sunker so that you catch any hairs. Spin a few times. Now ideally we want to have quite slim dubbed body here in the back. And gradually it will become fatter towards the head of the fly and the, and the lead and the weightening and, and that part will also make sure that you have some kind of taper underneath. Secure it with a few wraps. And you need about the size, a little bit less than size of the bead with, with the tying point here for the, for the sunk strip. Secure this with a few wraps. Now I like to brush my brush the body. I have a dubbing brush here. Brush it from top and down. 
and do that on both sides like this and then I kind of stroke the fibers backwards like so I like to have some kind of attraction point on this fly and I'm tying in some some gills if you like or, or, or a beard of of red rabbit sunker and I just take out like five six millimeters or so up to a centimeter of hair and just tear them off and then you see all these guard hairs pick those out I only want the kind of under fur here so that also gives me a, a bunch of hairs with our about the same length like this this one with tying on the underside of the hook so I turn, turn the hook upside down a measure from the, from the head then approximately to the, to the point of the hook like so Take, make a soft loop inside my fingers a couple of them pull go down and make sure that this sit centered on the hook and splay out to both of the sides like so Happy with that, secure with a few more wraps, uh, cut off the excess. It's quite important to clean up a little bit here in the front for each tying process you do so that you don't end up with a lot of these small hairs and fibers sticking out that would look quite bad when you add the UV glue. So now we're done with that part. Now it's time to, to fasten the soakers. And I like to do a lot of moistening of this soaker to, to kind of see how this eventually will turn out to look. And when you tie the soaker, don't just pull like this and tie it in. Then it will look really awkward and, and kind of slim here in the front. You want to have quite a few of the hairs also sticking outside the hook to kind of have the nice, nice pattern of the hair, of those hairs on top all the way and it also builds up a little bit of extra volume in the front that also gives a nice impression of a tapered small fish fasten this with a few wraps now and check out that the, the sunken strip didn't slide to either of the sides it's nice and centered like so then you take your fine scissors sneak it under the Sunker like this and cut it off. And if there are any ends of the skin here, you just trim them as short as you can. Like so. To make this really durable, I add a little bit of super glue on my tying thread before I tie down the rest of the sunker. Like this. Clean up. There we are. Now is kind of the point where you want to trim the fly a little, a little bit. You can see this, this doesn't look very well. You want the body to be tapered like this towards the back. So I start, just trim away a little bit. Now pull, pull a little bit in the hair. Don't cut like straight off. Cut a little bit like this. Like, and you will have this nice, nice shape and you can Trim it in your hands afterwards as well. I think I'm pretty happy with this one now. You can see it have some taper. We're nearly done with most of the tying, and um, there's one operation left, and that is to make a, a color hackle around the hook. And uh, I'm using uh, the same material as the wing. Cut off a piece on about 10 millimeter. And what I do, I just insert this into the, to the paper clamp, like so. You want these hairs to be about the same length at, uh, as the, the red beard that you tied on the underside. So you can measure up a little bit before you cut. And those are ready. Then we'll make another dubbing loop. Make a nice long one so you can you can separate these uh, hairs 
on a little bit longer distance than you you insert them in that's that's quite important because if you just put this in now just spin you will, might end up with like one and a half round around the hook or something because you must take into consideration that uh, the hook is quite and uh, um, thick behind the, the bead here now so spread those fibers out on a longer distance give you more wraps and better, better possibilities to, to make it nice and even especially when we're when using as little as we are now so put this in gentle now they are centered so now you can see I'm kind of pulling them trying to splay them out on the thread making a longer hackle with even distance between the fibers the hairs then very gently start to spin let the thread get a good grip on these hairs before you give it a little bit of a faster one like this so now we're ready what you can do to avoid to tie so many down you can moisten your fingers and pull them to one side like you do with when you tie a hackle sometimes and that will give you a one side of the dowing loop that is almost bare then you start to come like this and for every turn now you just stroke these fibers backwards back up and back and tie all the way till you reach the bead don't be afraid to to tie close to the bead there will be plenty of possibilities to kind of clean up afterwards eventually we want the, the part behind the bead to be as tall as the bead and also as thick as we, we need a smooth surface to fasten and glue these eyes since I'm gluing them partially on the on the fly the hook and out on the tungsten bead need to be nice and flat on the sides here like so clean up some silly hairs here We need about half of the size of the bead behind it, like so. Nice and clean now. Let's make a whip finish. Give it like four or five rounds or something. Three, four, five. Don't pull and cut, just cut off gently, like this. white top on the fly doesn't look very good so I like to use a black marker pen to, to give the give the fly a little bit of attitude looks more natural like this so any any waterproof marker pen is good to do this I even touch the bead like so okay now it's time to glue the eyes and don't fall for the temptation of just putting those 3D eyes on and use uh, UV glue only to give them some hold. Put on super glue on the side, generous portion like this. And then I put one on my side as well. And I like to like it to, to cure a little bit before I put the eyes on. And then very gently, just start on my side, sticking it on, squeezing it lightly, like so. And then on the far side, just let it touch the hook, it will. And then you slide it to place, like so. And the eyes that should be placed on the bead, where, where the bead is on the top, where the curve is backwards. And when I'm happy with that, I think that's quite alright. 
then I'll let this dry before, before I continue the tying. I even like to place a generous drop of super glue here on the top between the eyes and let that kind of come down towards the eyes on each side. And let that dry completely before I continue to tie the fly because then I'm then I'm sure that this is going to be as durable as I can do it. So while that one is drying, I have another one that is ready. This one is dried. And the only thing missing with this one is to, to put on the UV glue. And before you do that, moisten all the fibers, pull it backwards like this, put on UV between the eyes top, let that soak up a little bit, and then just give it a little bit like this before you cure it even more. It's the top, let's do the same on the bottom. You can always, you can always add UV glue in more than one operation also. Better to add a little two times down too much of the first try. But that one is almost finished. After I'm done with the UV glue I, I like to, to have it completely tack free so I actually put on a little bit of tying varnish as well on the top here and also on the bottom and let that fly dry now completely for a few minutes before I put it in my fly box. So and the mini soaker is ready.